Hey, everybody. Um, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jeff Chen. I'm CEO of uh, a bank called Mer Merkle Republic. We're a crypto bank, B2B, um, MerkleRepublic.com. And um, I am at, this is Jeff Chen across uh, Telegram, Twitter, and Instagram. If you guys want to get in touch afterwards, happy to talk about any of this. Um, so um, today we're going to be looking at NFT custody and moving money around in a convergent world. I think it's no secret that fiat and um, uh, fiat and crypto are going to converge. I don't know if it's going to be next 12 months, next 24 months, next 60 months. Uh, but obviously you have two currencies and they should all work together um, fluidly. Um, so when we started this project, so I'm an engineer by trade. And when I tried to make a crypto project, it was like nearly impossible for me to move coins around. And when I had the tokens, it was a nightmare to manage. So we decided to conduct an industry-wide survey. So uh, we interviewed um, more than 30 funds and companies in this space and asked them, you know, how do you guys uh, manage your fiat and crypto? And hopefully um, uh, get, uh, get some insights from them that we can share to, share to everyone. Uh, and this is what we came up with. Um, uh, this is it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so um, quick takeaway, executive summary for those who are, you know, TLDR or TLDL. Um, <laughs> uh, banking regulations was pretty uh, a huge block, and that was like Q4 of last year, so now it's way worse, and we'll go into like how the industry has been affected. Um, and also, lack of automation for on-chain activity uh, was also majorly cited. Um, but even though, um, uh, despite all these challenges, I guess, uh, people still had a lot of good use cases for crypto for things like um, on-chain payroll, which was dramatically easier uh, internationally. Um, and it turns out that um, while this is challenging, most of the people we talked to were not focused on moving the money around, they're just trying to get more customers. And we'll highlight that uh, in a second to see, um, you know, sort of priority of needs. Uh, and so this challenge, I think, will really um, become more and more real as a space like matures. Um, so I'm Jeff, I, I'm part of the Stanford Blockchain Club. Uh, also, I'm an engineer by trade at Stanford and Berkeley. Um, I also course facilitate the Stanford Blockchain course. Um, and um, the team I worked with is here, and I'll note that uh, Ben here also won uh, East Denver Hackathon uh, last year. <clears throat> so uh, we looked at more than 30, 32 companies um, across Web3 companies and funds. About a third were companies and two-thirds were funds. Um, out of those uh, companies, uh, four were DeFi, uh, five NFT companies, and the fund's medium AUM is about 21 million. So that's just like fairly like um, good averages for the industry, I think, um, in terms of just the population of companies. Um, so a couple of, a couple of um, key patterns. One is you have one fiat bank account, three exchanges, and C5 exchanges, you move money around. Another pattern we had was uh, we have one fiat account, uh, some sort of custodial solution, th three exchanges, <laughs> And then the final pattern we found was you just raise all your money in crypto, you kept in the crypto, and never went to fiat, unless absolutely necessary. But most people just didn't. Um, so here you have a chart of what happened. So 55% of the organization, about half, um, only use CFI, and about a quarter only use DeFi. Uh, and there's some OTC stuff where you have a broker uh, sprinkled in here as well. And Um, out of the custodial, so it was really cool because most people had a custody, uh, like custodian for their tokens. This is not, um, and most of them believed in not your keys, not your coins. And uh, Fireblocks is the most popular custodian there. So for those of you, how many people know about Fireblocks and MPC technology? Show of hands. Okay, so about half the audience. Um, so with this technology, instead of you handing your keys to someone else entirely, like say in Anchorage, or you keeping your keys entirely, say like your MetaMask wallet, super dangerous, don't do that. Um, 
Here you shard your keys into many pieces or break into the many pieces. Um, you give some of it to fireblocks and then you keep some of it so that uh, they're like a guardian on top of it. And you have a full backup of your keys somewhere in a safe. So even if fireblocks goes extinct tomorrow, you can still recover all of your keys. But in most day-to-day -day transactions, they kind of watch for your transactions. You can put rules on there. It's not an advertisement for fireblocks. This is just a really cool technology. I think Coinbase has their own coming out for consumer level. So we expect this to be um, proliferating through the industry. All right. Um, this was an interesting finding. I guess not so surprising that most people had um, more than a quarter used two, and the ones who had only one uh, wish they had. They're exploring a second option. So there's a lot of trust issues even with these custodians. And I think this is a good practice. So I think uh, on a business level, you should have both uh, the public, uh, sorry, uh, both a, um, a couple of custodians that you really trust to hold onto your keys and your tokens in case something happens to one of them. And I'm about to run out of time. So tracking on-chain activity uh, was a major challenge cited for on-chain uh, crypto movement. In fact, one fund called it an unmitigated disaster. And <laughs> uh, right now it's a series of screenshots and then sending all the screenshots to their accounts to do this. I think some companies are working on this, but this is a major headache. So for those of you doing uh, business on-chain, um, you know, if you run into this challenge, this is fairly normal, no good solutions today. Uh, some, uh, some people try to solve this, but uh, not, nobody really decided. Um, complexity of crypto movement takes many, many steps to do anything. Uh, especially there were only, at the time, four banks that were responsible for everyone's banking. And that was, um, and now there was only one left. It was like BCG, Silvergate, all the ones, Metropolitan. And now three of them are gone. So you only have BCB group. So a lot of customers are getting deep banked today. That's the... Um, that's the unfortunate news of where we are in the industry. But I do think we need fiat, uh, fiat yeah, to, um, because that's where all the money comes from. Okay. Hopefully I'm not doing anything. Okay, so I think that was the last slide. So uh, key things to note. Uh, regulation, oh, there we go. Um, these companies and funds mostly are focused on surviving the winter by finding customers and raising money. And systems used are a hodgepodge of solutions that doesn't look like it'll scale. Um, and key issues around regulation of bookkeeping, people are plagued by them and we're just navigating it one day at a time. So thanks for your time.